everyone, Sean Frangella here for motiontutorials.net with a new tutorial on how to create this 3D text animation all inside of After Effects using Cinema 4D Lite. So imagine this, you're an After Effects user. Did you know you get Cinema 4D Lite, which is a pretty big version of Cinema 4D, free with After Effects? So let's just say you want to make some 3D text. So maybe your text tool and turn on 3D, maybe even change it to this ray trace renderer, close this big warning message that says it basically doesn't work, open up everything, and maybe pull back extrusion depth and 3D text, right? No, let's delete all that. And let's talk about going to the big kid table. We're gonna not do that. Instead, we're gonna create this in Cinema 4D Lite. So to do that, I'm gonna go to File, New, Max on Cinema 4D File. It's gonna create a new Cinema 4D file and ask me to save that. So I'll just call this a new file. And then if I'm working in After Effects, it's gonna open up the light version of Cinema 4D, which right now is Cinema 4D Lite R16. And here we are. So if you're new to Cinema 4D completely, let's talk about getting off the ground and working with the After Effects version to build some cool stuff like 3D text that animates letter by letter like we see in our example. So to get that started, what we're gonna do is go up here. This is kind of like a mini illustrator in Cinema 4D and there's one that's text, boom, got some text. And down here on the right, we got our text properties. So we could just call this 3D text, wow, with a couple exclamation points. And we got all our basic text stuff like you'd see in Photoshop or After Effects, we could change our font. Let's get maybe like this headline A that I like to use. It's really big and bulky. We can change the alignment so it's middle we can move our camera around up here pan dolly in out or rotate similar to what we do in after effects cameras we can change our text height our horizontal spacing or our tracking we can change our vertical spacing and we can even adjust the kerning letter by letter by clicking on this kerning show 3d gui and then adjust each letter so no big deal we're getting right off the ground but it's just these outlines right now. And if I look up here, I got some render options. If I press this or press Command R, it's gonna render my scene and I don't see anything. And that's because unlike Illustrator, in 3D, we need some geometry to see anything. And that's where we can get into these modifiers up here. If we get this extrude object and just drop our text underneath it and kind of plug it in. Now, if we press that, we're gonna get some text. and bonus little shortcut if you have the text highlighted get this hold alter option it's going to drop that in automatically and what this is going to do is give us some 3d text on that shape and down here we have our attributes and what this panel is for is whatever object we have it's going to show different information on that so the text is still editable down there we could still change the font and everything the extrude object has settings that are unique to that so we can do things like push our movement and to make it bigger and we can go to caps and there we're talking about what we're doing with these edges so what we can do instead of having this harsh edge we can change it to fillet cap and fillet cap on the front and back and that's going to give us kind of this cool little chiseled look and if i go right here to display in this garage shading lines this is what's actually happening so it's like vector art but pushing it back in 3D space. So it's got to calculate that somehow. So it gives us these edges and in these caps, we can turn up the steps and that's how many edges it's going to create. We can turn up and down the radius and that's how big it is. So we can make them even and we can even change this fillet type if you want different styles. If we kind of pull in the camera close here by just tracking in the mouse, we can change it to things like this half circle, one step, two step, and all sorts of cool stuff. So let's leave it on just this convex for now. We'll keep it basic. And now we got our 3D text. What's cool about this extrude object is say we wanted different scaling of text or different vector objects altogether. What I could do is actually make a copy of this text and I can do that by holding command and I'm gonna drag down and make sure this one is in that same little tree hierarchy. And what's nice about Cinema 4D is everything is still editable and I can turn off the visibility of each little part. So if I turn off that extrude, Here's our two text objects. On this first one, let's just have that be this word 3D text. And there we got only that one. And on the second one, let's not call that. Let's just call this one animation. Still keep our exclamation point for good measure. 
and I'll move this one down and now I can turn everything back on, but we're only actually gonna see the first one. And the way we can fix that is if we go to this extrude object under object, there's this very important little switch, it's called hierarchical. And what that's gonna do if we check it is let us have a family of objects under this extrude and then it's gonna extrude them all evenly. And the point of that is that on the second text, which we could double click to rename and just call this text line two or whatever we want, we could adjust it separately. So maybe it's smaller and kind of lines up and we can even throw other vector objects in there. Let's say we get this circle, we could drop that in. We can move it with our move tool right here or pressing E and we could scale it by pressing T or grabbing that and just move it up. And then if we drop that into that extrude object, bam, it's gonna do all of them at once. You can kind of create these cool little combinations of vector shapes and it's gonna extrude everything. Now we're in Cinema 4D, it's a separate little program. In this case, that's bundled with After Effects. We've only been in here a couple minutes, but let's talk about how this actually gets into After Effects. So if I save this file and jump back into After Effects, we can see it's sitting in our project here, right? Here, there's that file. And it's seeing it as footage, so it's looking at it as an 800 by 600 video that's three seconds long and 30 frames per second. Now, if we jump back into Cinema 4D, similar to After Effects render settings, if we go to here, we have our render settings, and by default, it's gonna be 800 by 600. If we want HD, we can put it at 1920 by 1080. And you can see it kind of adjusts the aspect ratio and we get these little bars on the top and bottom. That represents the aspect ratio of our scene. So if we scale this up and down, you can see how those fall. So we see that it's still 16 by nine ratio. Now, if I save that and jump back into After Effects, you can see that that's updated. So that's a really important way of how this system works. If you're really new to Cinema 4D Lite, it's good to understand that it's sending it back over dynamically whenever you save. So if I make an adjustment, maybe just orbit around, save, go back over, you can see our little preview is updated. And now if we think about this, like a Photoshop file or footage that we brought in After Effects, what we can do is take this Cinema 4D file, drag it to our new composition button, and it's gonna make a new composition based on those project settings that we just set up and it's gonna automatically drop this Cineware effect on it, which is the bridge between Cinema 4D and After Effects that lets you bring C4D files straight into After Effects or use Cinema 4D Lite and it's gonna render it. So what's with this crazy Tron looking grid? Why isn't this looking like what we just saw in Cinema 4D? Well, what it's doing with the Cineware effect is defaulting it to a software render so you get a quick preview. If we wanna change this renderer to our full render where it's gonna look like what the final output would actually look like. We can change this renderer from software to standard final, and there we'll see what it would actually look like. And we can see we kind of got a little bit of problems with some of this text. We'll get into that in a second. But what it's doing here is rendering that out based on these settings and automatically cutting out an alpha channel. And what's nice about this is that we can combine this with stuff you can already do in After Effects. So if we had this text, and we wanted a solid behind it, we could get a solid, maybe get like a red color, call this background, drop it behind. And we could even do other stuff on top of it, like adjustment layers, maybe we want adjustment layer and grab like a glow. We can kind of use that just like we would use footage and mix and work with it with the stuff we already know in After Effects. So that's kind of the main point of doing this and getting outside of that little basic ray trace extruding option in After Effects because we can already do a lot more and let's keep going and get some materials on this and fix some of these little issues. So I'm gonna jump back into Cinema 4D Lite and that's Command or Control Tab if you wanna use this app switcher. And here we have our text. Now first let's fix this little issue. We can see something's get a little weird with our M, what's happening there? If we turn off our extrude, well, it looks like I screwed up the kerning when I copied it, so we can just fix that this way. We need to do that. Didn't do that on purpose, but good to know. But there's something else I wanna talk about real quick, 
that's important when we're doing things like text. If we turn off our extrude and kind of get really close, we can see that it's putting this on the outside, which might look a little weird and can have some overlap issues if we're looking at things like here. And if we go to that extrude and really turn up the radius, we can see how we're eventually going to get problems and things like that exclamation point and our A is getting kind of weird. And there's some really important settings when you're doing this with text in Cinema 4D Lite. There's this constraint checkbox, and instead of putting the bevels and edges on the outside, what that would do is put it on the inside. Now we still got some little weird issues. We probably just have too big of a bevel. But if we turn that down to something like two, 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 we can see the difference between what constraining it does and just keeping that in mind. And the other thing is we have shapes like this A or the O where there's shapes cut out. Well, that's what this hole inward means is what it's gonna do by default is bevel that on the outside. Now, if that was cutting out too much of the letter, what we can do is check that on and you can see if we zoom in here like this crazy 3D tunnel and kind of look in there, that way it's gonna bevel the inside. And that can fix some issues if you're getting this some sort of problems with how it's dealing with the letters. Not really a problem for this one. I'll take that off, but it's really important to note that. Okay, so we got our text, but it's just this boring gray. Well, what do we do next? Well, there's some really fundamental things about 3D that go beyond just kind of vector art, where there's colors and things. We got our geometry, what our object is. We have materials, which is what this empty box is for here. We got lights like we would have in real lights. And then we have render settings, like maybe a camera we're looking through, as well as if we pop that back open, additional effects that we can add that change what our image is gonna look like. Cause it's not just 2D flat stuff like in After Effects 3D. It's actually calculating this based on real properties. So if we just wanna get some basic colors and materials on this, what we can do is go to create new material that's gonna create a new material. I can double click that. It's already just this kind of default gray, but how to get this on to our whole object is we can drag that onto this extrude and that's gonna change it from that dark gray to kind of this lighter default gray, but you can already kind of see how this is making a difference. And there's a lot of stuff that goes into materials. There's color, bump, all sorts of settings. So in this one, I'm just going to talk about kind of basic stuff, but if you want to learn more about 3D materials, you can check out one of my other videos where I get really in depth on what a lot of these mean and how to kind of work and get started with 3D materials. So if you want to jump to that one or see that one after this, click that thumbnail, take a look at that one. Otherwise, right now, let's just talk about our basics. So we got some basic color and some basic reflection, which by default just gives it this little specular hit. I could change my color to something else. Let's just make this like a much lighter gray. I'll call this gray or gray with an E, however you like to spell it. And save and to jump back over in After Effects. And there's our 3D text. I'll just turn off our glow. And that's kind of where we are so far. Pretty good start, right? So what's cool about this text and materials is we can customize the edges and different parts of it really easily. And that's something you couldn't do with just the After Effects 3D. Say we want the edges to be red or blue or pink or some other color. What we can do is either create a new material or actually just duplicate this material by holding Command and dragging to the right. And then I'm gonna open up this one. And let's make this kind of like a, a dark red. So we see it in our render, I'll call this red. Close that. Now what I can do is drag this onto this same extrude object as well. And it's gonna replace it, but what's neat about working with these materials and 3D text objects in Cinema 4D Lite is if I click on either of these little icons, this is our texture tag. And this affects how it's projected or wrapped around our object. And all that matters right now is there's this little selection field. And if I click in that and type C1, it's gonna texture only the front caps. And if I typed in R1, it's gonna texture only the edges. So it's pretty cool. We could have something for our main object. We could duplicate another one, open this up. 
maybe make this like a darker gray, call this dark gray, throw that one on there too. And then we could call that C1. And then it's gonna texture that. And it's doing this sequentially. Now those look pretty close, so maybe that wasn't a good example, but let's say if that was a different color, like a much darker gray. There we can kind of see what we're going for. And we could even make that gray for that first one, maybe a little lighter, closer to white. And you can see how this is working. And what's cool is we could kind of take a look at this and maybe change those and change the order. So maybe if we wanted actually the caps to be red, we can get this one and do C1. And then on the second one, do R1. And there we got something a little different. And again, if we save and jump back over in After Effects, that's gonna update so we can see that's what we got going on. We got some 3D text in After Effects with Cinema 4D Lite. So there's a lot more to go through with Cinema 4D Lite and After Effects as we get into animation and some of the other topics. There is a lot you can do with this to really push lighting, rendering, cameras, all that sort of stuff. So take this as a quick intro, and if you wanna learn about animating this text letter by letter in the next part, be sure to hit up that thumbnail where we'll talk about doing some animation and some cool stuff you can do letter by letter in Cinema 4D Lite like you would with After Effects type animators. And if you wanna learn a little more about the basics of Cinema 4D Lite and Cineware, be sure to check out some of the other tutorials where we go over materials and more depth, lighting, animation, and lots more. And if you wanna get more information on this one or any of mine, be sure to check out motiontutorials.net where we have tons of Cinema 4D and Cinema 4D Lite tutorials. And if you wanna get access to these project files, if you feel like that's really helpful to you, you can get that by supporting the show either on Motion Tutorials or becoming a weekly supporter on Patreon, where if you throw in a couple bucks a tutorial, you can get any of these project files or all of these project files, as well as additional bonus content. So be sure to check that out. And even if you don't care and like your free content and don't want to throw in money, I totally get that. Just check out the site too, where you can learn all sorts of stuff for free on all these topics. And if you have any questions, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella or check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash motion tutorials. If you're into the social media, I'm not on Snapchat because I'm too old and I don't even know what that's for still, but you can hit me up on those other ones. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.